Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Acts. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaimed you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, the jailer put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. A 
about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. When he brought them outside, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 97. Let us read responsibly by whole verse. <clears throat> the Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who true heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A reading from Revelation. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, our Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This past Wednesday, which was the eve of the Ascension, some of us gathered here for Eucharist to remember the theological truth that 40 days after Easter, the localized presence of Jesus, those the ability to see him at the empty tomb, in the upper room by the Sea of Tiberias, those opportunities to visually see Jesus with human eyes ended. Or as one internet meme put it, it was the day that Jesus decided to work from home. <laughs> you all saw that, didn't you? Oh. Both the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel of Luke tell us that he was taken out of their sight and into the clouds, which is just the way the Bible uses of saying that Jesus entered into God's glory. Remember from the Old Testament, the story of Moses going up to get the Ten Commandments for six days while he was up on the mountain of God, clouds surrounded the mountain. And there are similar images to that in the story of the Transfiguration, where Jesus appears in glory with Moses and Elijah, likewise clouds are there. So what we mean by this, the, the Bible speaks of this as a way of saying when he entered into the clouds, he's entering into eternity, he's entering into mystery, he's entering into that which is transcendent. So if we can understand that as a literary device, we need not be troubled by the notion of a two-story universe where Jesus goes up into the clouds. The importance of the ascension, theologically, is for us to understand that it completes the work of the Incarnation. At Christmas, we remember that God humbled himself to take on our frail human nature. At the Ascension, we remember that our frail human nature is now forever united with Christ and glorified and exalted into heaven. We are glorified because Jesus has been glorified. And yet, there are times when we do not feel glorified, right? Maybe um, Paul and Silas can sing hymns after they've been beaten and put in prison, but that's probably not the first thing that most of us would do. We don't always act as if we have been glorified. And if you feel that way, as I do certainly, then the Bible tells us that we are in good company. When the ascension happened, the disciples the actual disciples who had seen these things were numb and paralyzed in their awe and incomprehension. Luke tells us that they just stood looking up at the sky with their mouths wide open. Not a very uh, attractive sight, is it? Not poised for action. They had to be reminded close your mouths, move on, 
remember what he told you. Go to Jerusalem, drum roll, and wait. Oh goody, our favorite thing, wait. It's interesting to note that the ascension nearly always coincides with the last week of school when our students have completed all their assignments, but they're not yet dismissed. They have to wait no longer under the, under the tyranny of having homework and assignments to do, but they're not quite free to go either. A small little week-long purgatory must first be endured. Does that image fit with a lot of your own faith journey? We're told all the time in church, you are loved, you are glorified, you have been exalted, oh, but you still have to live with two feet in a world that is a work in progress. Our Christian faith tells us that we are a now but not yet tautology, attention. We live in an in-between time. It's like the will has been written, but we don't get the inheritance yet. Last Sunday, after a weekend in which three separate shootings in 72 hours had left people dead, I preached a sermon to you that was designed to encourage us and at least lead us past the despair and the apathy that comes so easily when we've tried and we've tried and we've tried and yet success seems elusive. I will admit to you that that would be a harder thing for me to preach today and it is a harder thing for you to hear or to leave because of the bitterness of our disappointment, the pain that we feel, brokenness of our hearts. And the purgatory of having to wait, wait, wait seems much more like hell. And we wonder where God's voice is to be heard, where it is to be heeded. As the Bible asks rhetorically, where is the wise man of this age? Or we may ask at least, where is the person of courage in this age? In the Gospel of John that we just heard, we have the continuation of the farewell discourse, as it's called, then leading into what is called the high priestly prayer. You can remember the setting, as you've read John's Gospel many times before. Jesus and the disciples are in the upper room. The Last Supper, the first Eucharist, has just been celebrated. Judas Iscariot has gone out into the night to do what he must do. Jesus first speaks to his little band of disciples, and then he just enters into a long personal prayer on to which they are allowed to eavesdrop. If this were Shakespeare, the rubrics would say something like, here beginneth the soliloquy, right? So Jesus is praying personally, passionately, intimately, but we're invited to listen. And as we do so, we're given some very important things to remember. First, Jesus prays for unity. Father, let them be one as you and I. Just as there is complete unity of love and purpose within the Holy Trinity, so too the church is to be united in love and purpose. Why? Well, it's easy to see, isn't it? Unity builds up and disunity tears apart time and again. And then Jesus continues. I ask, not only on behalf of these, but on behalf of those who will believe through their word. Do you hear that? Do we get that? You know what that means, don't you? We can't sit in our front lawns in the shade Lemonade in hand and admire our God's got this signs. That's what that means. Our work in all of this 
purgatorial in-between time is constantly to go out, to love, to speak the truth, to build unity with those who will listen, and to stand as courageous prophets for those who will. God has made the divine will known. He has given us the formula that God will not do our work for us. The systems that control so much of the wealth and power in this and every land will not change on their own. They must be confronted by a unified presence of love, peace, justice, fairness, generosity, it is hard work. Sometimes it seems like impossible work. And for many of us, for most of our lives, we've nodded our heads in agreement, but we haven't as often gotten our hands very dirty. Next Sunday, Pentecost comes. The confused languages of the noisy crowd are transformed into a common language that all can comprehend. May God grant us this year a true Pentecost. We are but a few at Church of the Good Shepherd, but we have a diocese to stand with us. And our bishop's wonderful video recorded message was extremely encouraging. That was released last week. And our diocese has the whole Episcopal Church and a wonderful cheerleader like Michael Curry to stand with us. And behind that, a whole worldwide Anglican communion. And in addition to that, we have countless faith communities, 10 of which we could walk to this morning in five minutes. We need to intentionally reach out. We need to begin to build coalitions. We need to seek a unity of witness for which our Lord prays this morning that the world may come to believe. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know And these know that you sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. In the name of God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in words of nice one. We believe in one God, in the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the churches. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord, and the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the day and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people found in your bulletin and sign. Sisters and brothers, the grace of Lord Jesus be with you and with all the saints. Our hope is found in the presence of the King of glory. 
So let us appeal to the Lord, saying, Amen. Come, Amen. Come Lord Jesus. We pray, Jesus, that your prayers might be answered. May your church be one, and as you and the Father are one. And through our unity, may the whole world come to know your love. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Ruth, our bishop, and Dow, our priest. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Most High, we eagerly await your return. We long for your reign of justice and righteousness. Now, even as we wait, deliver the innocent from the hands of the wicked. Bless the true-hearted with joyful gladness. We pray for President Biden and all world leaders. We pray for peace. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O oh Lord, the heavens declare your righteousness. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, lungs to breathe in your holy presence. Please offer your prayers of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, I give you praise. Also, as we're praying for thanksgivings, I would like to mention praying for in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of South India United, and in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the youth of the Diocese of South Carolina and all those associated with youth ministry, remembering those who are graduating and those preparing for summer, summer mission trips. Amen. Call the Lord Jesus. We pray, lover of souls, for all those who are being exploited. We pray for those in bondage. We pray for those who suffer because of the greed of others. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. We pray for those who thirst for wholeness, for healing, for deliverance. We pray for all those who thirst. Give to the thirsty the gift of the water of life. Please offer your petitions for the sick and suffering. Today we pray for those killed in Uvalde, Texas last Tuesday. Uzziah Garcia, Jose Flores, Amaria Joe Garza, Xavier Javier Lopez, Nevea Bravo, Alethea Ramirez, Tess Marie Meda, Alexandria Anaya Rubio, Layla Salazar, McKenna Lee Elrod, Jace Lovanos, Jayla Nicole Salguero, Eliana Ellie Garcia, Eliana Cruz Torres, Annabelle Guadalupe Rodriguez, Jacqueline Jackie Cazares, Mady Juliana Rodriguez, Rogelio Torres, Miranda Mathis, Eva Morales, Irma Garcia, and Salvador Ramos. We also pray for our second suffering, Oliver Baker, Bennett Barber, Marianne Bastion, Ken Bonnet, Larry Brooks, Mike Collison, Leona Finch, Peter Hayes, Jackson Moody, Michelle Rotten, Stanley Tucker, Melissa Simpson, Paula Andrews, and all those who are serving as caregivers for loved ones. And Nancy Brown. Amen. Come on, Lord Jesus. Alpha and Omega, you bid your people come. May we and all who have died be with you where you are forever and ever. Today we pray for the Reverend Howard Hanchi, Daphne Sellers. Are there others? Amen. Come on, Lord Jesus. May their 
souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and may light a perpetual shrine of love. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now also with you. babysitting gifts on the bulletin board back here uh, by the nursery. And yesterday she graduated from Ashley Beach High School. Headed off to Clemson University where she's going to major in chemistry. And then pharmacy school after that. Ambitious and wonderful and accomplished. We're so proud of you. And we have this gift and a card and we will be thinking about you as you start this exciting adventure in the next chapter in your life. And I do happen to know that Holy Trinity Episcopal Church is within walking distance. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just get the rector to sign a bulletin and send it back to me, that's <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Julia. Thank you. <laughs> walking love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and in sacrifice to God.
we offer this holy sacrifice to the honor and glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Blessed Trinity, with special intention today for the ministry of Meals on Wheels of Somerville. We continue to pray weekly, daily, uh, for peace in the Ukraine. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember the women and men of our armed forces who gave their lives in the service of this country. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. And may the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of God's name, to our benefit and that of all God's holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also subject to evil and death. You and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Life was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the 
cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of you. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternity. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now. And, Amen. Amen. and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia.
blood on spray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.